Many thanks for staying with us. Now, fresh crisis is brewing in the People's Democratic Party following the list of caretaker committee members it recently published to run the affairs of some states and local government areas. It was gathered that the list for River State was particularly generating controversies and deepening the already existing political crisis between the camps of the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Nyensam Wike, and the State Governor, Siminalai Fubara. Fubara on Thursday fumed over the list, describing it as fake and insisting that it fell short of the agreements the PDP governors had with the party's National Working Committee. Fubara insisted that Rivers would abide by the decision that the executive officers whose tenures had, had expired in March should remain in their various capacities for the three months extension period approved by the NWC elapses to enable the conduct of fresh congresses. And now to discuss this, I am joined by Good Governance Advocate and Executive Director of the Extra Step Initiative, Eugene Abels. Uh, Eugene Abels, it's nice to have you around. Thank you for having me. So we see that Governor Fubara said the Kyoto Car Community List is fake, insisting that it fell short of the agreement the PDP governors had with the party's uh, National Working Committee. I'd like to find out who should pretend it over the list in the first place, and why is the governor averse to that list? So can you take that question again? So I said I'd like to be sure who should pretend it over the list, and why is it that uh, the governor has reservation over the list? Okay, um, who have I superintended uh, with that, over that list, uh, obviously did not carry the governor along. And uh, we know that after the Third Republic and the Fourth Republic, the governors or the chief executives of states, local governments, and at the federal level are, are lead members of their parties. And nothing is done in their domain except they are carried along. And um, so in this instance, the, the man who is supposed to be the leader of the party in River State has openly said that he's not, he's not aware of that list and uh, it goes contrary to the agreements they had as, uh, as governors, as members of the PDP, governors of the PDP, because uh, there will be, he went further to state that there was no need for such a list or such a distortion or such inclusion because everybody was looking forward to when they will when the executive and uh, the National Working Committee comes together to meet in a few days' time. So when we have issues like this, uh, does this suggest uh, that the PDP River State has been infiltrated? Probably there's a crack, and therefore there is a faction that is loyal to the FCT minister uh, against uh, the governor? Uh, no, normally, the, the last leader of the party is uh, the is the former governor of the state, um, who obviously um, has publicly stated that he does not want to lose his structure. So what's happening? Uh, it's not surprising. I'm not accusing him that he's responsible for it, mm. but you should expect this kind of shenanigans, political shenanigans to happen. Uh, it's normal. Uh, but when the uh, National Working Committee meets, all of this will be straightened out. If you notice, in the APC, not long ago, a couple of weeks back, the national chairman appointed six governors to man, uh, to man the six geopolitical cells. It's, they did that deliberately to create order so that nothing happens if there are appointments, positions that are available. You need to clear with the governor that's in charge of that zone. So I don't think it will be different from the PDP. Mm. This is our initial diagram. When the national is it, PDP has a lot to sort out. This will be the list of their problems. <laughs> but the governor could have kept quiet, but he needed to speak out so that uh, his followers would not think that uh, they're losing control of the party. Well, you're an advocate of good governance, and um, the governor has come out to say or suggest that um, this week's list may involve wasteful lobbying and needless expenditure. So from where you stand, do you think it could have negative impact on finances? Uh, of course, there's power struggle as we see it in River State, but then could it affect governance and finances um, of the state government? Uh, yeah, no, um, politics is, is, is big time business, and, um, and uh, particularly when it is played where you have weak institutions, weak public institutions, who don't, who, who do not act for, for political reasons. 
um, because a lot of politics has taken over the administration, the management of Nigeria. A lot of ex resources are expended for things to be done for you, but not because of you. I'll give an example. We are all witnesses to the fact that um, when uh, former President uh, Donald Trump left the White House, one or two things were erroneously taken out of the White House. They didn't wait for the sitting president to ask for those things to be returned. Um, the agencies responsible immediately went for those things. When documents who were found to be in a wrong way, nobody looked at anybody. So those things were, they went for them because those institutions are strong and are doing the things they are supposed to do. But in our climate, you need to be in good, the good books of the power centers but, and also the coercive agencies of government. Uh, if they act properly and timely without waiting for prompt, most of these things will end. And, uh, but it, you, you cannot be holier than the Pope. Where we find ourselves today, you need a lot of resources, time and money is expended for you to make things to work in your favor, whether you're in or out of office. Okay. Eugenia Bells, it was nice talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.